pay Cricket customers. Max with ads is included with your Cricket $60 unlimited plan at no additional cost. Nice! Max is the streaming platform where you can watch Scoob, Meg 2 The Trench, The Nightmare on Elm Street Collection, and so much more. Remember me. Just log in with your Cricket username and password to experience Max on all your favorite devices. We've never seen this before. Max, the one to watch for a good scream with Cricket. Yeah! Phone plan streams and standard definition. Programming subject to change. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See cricketwireless.com for details. The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone. We've locked in low prices to help you save big store-wide. Look for the Locked In Low Prices tags and enjoy extra savings throughout the store. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Love is patient, love is kind. But sometimes love can be deadly. Many couples may look happy, but we don't always know what happens behind closed doors. Don't I know it. Every week, the ParCast Network's new podcast, Crimes of Passion, looks into what happens when true love meets true crime. Crimes of Passion analyzes the relationship dynamics and psychology that lead to betrayal, crimes, and even murder. New episodes of Crimes of Passion come out every Wednesday. You can listen to the first episode on Wilma Hoyt right now, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. And look for upcoming episodes on Amy Fisher and Joey Buttafuoco, Lorena Bobbitt, and Jody Arias. I mean, are you kidding me? These are the stories we live for. So search for and subscribe to Crimes of Passion wherever you listen to podcasts. Again, search for Crimes of Passion or visit parcast.com slash passion to listen now and on to the show. So you're part of the show. Y'all are really like boisterous already, which is awesome. But I need you to just like, we're going to practice really, really quickly, like the full scale of human emotion. All right. Are you ready? Uh, so let's talk, let's, I want to hear what it sounds like for you as the audience who is part of the show being recorded. Uh, what, what if you hear something like that really sucks? Oh, is that what you do? You're stronger than I am. What about if there's something that you're like, um, What's an emotion? Give me an emotion. I'm just kidding. Um, how about something real, like kind of funny, but not super funny? <laughs> that was good. That was the best, actually. I love that. Okay, what about something that's like so funny you can you're gonna pee? <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay, what if we want to just do like a little clap just to like be happy about ourselves? That was. That was like a negative two on the scale. I, can I get like a five? Can I get a six or a seven? Can I get an eight? How about a 42 as we welcome to the stage, Kenyon, Lucy, and Amanda, the Wine and Crime Gals. Can we get the projector to work? God bless. Bueller. Oh, there Bueller. it is. Oh, 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 and we're live. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh this is a Guys. big black microphone. Hello? Oh, there I've we are. I've seen bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a penis joke. Oh, my God. It's so funny. Oh, hi. Oh, How is everyone? Just- Right. Bastion! <laughs> this I is like oh it. my! I have to make full eye contact with my grandmother while talking about bestiality. <laughs> so that's happening. Yep. She taught Hi. me everything I know. Hi, Amanda's grandma. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Are you guys ready? All right. Yes. You are listening 
to Wine and Crime, the <laughs> podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accent. Oh, Woo! you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kenyon. I'm Lucy. And I'm Amanda. Yes. And thank you for coming. Thanks for thank coming, you guys. For coming. Y'all braved the rain. Yeah, Today's well, weather was yeah. kind of shitty for yeah. election day. And also, yeah. can I get a Speaking rousing of- applause if you voted today or Woo! earlier? Yes. Yes. God yes. bless. We're here to reassure you that we voted early or absentee. Yeah, we so voted. So we promise we didn't like shit down your throats about voting and then go, <laughs> we were on tour, we couldn't do it. <laughs> Man. Don't worry. But we like, did it. Treat your country. We right? voted twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's allowed, right? <laughs> Cancel out some other people's Bye. votes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for this very special live episode, Ooh. we uh, didn't want to just do Massachusetts crimes Boring. or Boring. Boston crimes. We wanted to go a little more niche, but still relevant. So we decided to do Puritan crimes. <laughs> <laughs> the Puritans were kinky motherfuckers. Yeah. The Puritans were full on weirdos. The Puritans fucked you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Love you. <laughs> She's just looking right She's at like, me. like, oh, God. Whew. Is it hot in here for anybody? <laughs> just me. Just me. Holy <laughs> shit. I will be... T- <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm having a hot flash. Fair enough. Okay, um, so Amanda, what is our wine crime pairing <sighs> for a Puritan crime slash just at this venue? We're drinking out of a can. <laughs> it's happening. I love it. Uh, this episode is paired with Francis Ford Coppola's Sauvignon Blanc, mm. a light, elegant, white, Puritan white wine. <laughs> <clears throat> it all circles back. It all fits. Yeah, tons. It balances sweet, juicy flavors with bright acidity. Their canned 2016 Diamond Collection Sauvignon Blanc is a bright wine with a vibrant intensity and body enhanced by a natural acidity <laughs> and crispness perfect for a summer's day in Massachusetts Bay or a frigidly cold, raining <laughs> no bullshit September afternoon evening. on a Tuesday. <laughs> it's perfect. While Trump is still president. Um... <laughs> To create a light, fresh Sauvignon Blanc that displays good balance and vibrant flavors, this wine blends grapes from three locations, Alexander Valley, Sonoma Valley, and Lake County. California is so fun, you guys. (laughs) Uh, Alexander Valley fruit provides a core of citrus and juicy tropical fruit flavors and the high elevation volcanic soils. Whoa. Yeah. (gasps) of Lake County contribute pretty floral notes and the Sonoma Valley grapes boast distinct mineral nuances. Mm. We're all following these notes for sure. Yeah, totally. To capture the varietal's aromatic qualities, the wine is fermented and finished in stainless steel and put in a can. (laughs) (laughs) Really helps the bouquet. Stainless steel. It was a choice. Gets the bouquet to go from the tiny mouth to your nose. To your tiny mouth. 13.5%. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have never done a canned beverage, but I think we'd call this a crack. So does everybody know what to do once I crack this? Yes. All right. Okay. If you don't know what to do, don't pretend. Follow just, along. Just, just keep your damn just mouth shut. Just open your mouth like this. This shit's being recorded. Don't ruin this. <laughs> we ready? And go. Nice, nice crack. crack. Oh. Woo! Cheers, you weirdos. Cheers. <laughs> the can no. or are we drinking out of our fucking patriarchy I need to wine decant this. So oh, yeah, just... it's best to let it get oxygenated. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the canned yeah. wine really benefits from a weak pour. Aeration. <laughs> Do I just crush this and throw it into the audience? <laughs> this is going to be trash queen for someone. Oh, yeah, save these. <laughs> We're running out of trash home. to male people. I'm bringing it home. We'll wash it out first. Cheers, Boston. Cheers. <laughs> I've had worse out of a can. Uh, SpaghettiOs. It has an interesting Budweiser. aroma. <laughs> yeah. 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 Chili beans unheated. <laughs> I was this, poor for a long time. This smells time. like Amanda's bedroom this morning. Yeah. Just and not farts. in a farts? great way. Yeah. Farts. That was Scott. It's good if you don't smell it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Rule of thumb, enter any room that I've been in for an extended period of time breathing through your mouth. <laughs> Just do yourself a favor. <laughs> All right. We've <laughs> learned this over the years. <laughs> Lucy, what is our background and psych for Puritan crimes? I'm so excited. You are going to like this a lot. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. I forgot. There were like 40 slides with that, that on it. I don't yeah, know that why. Was that was the stock art that the, came in Keynote. Yeah. Wait, that's just built into Keynote? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. This was the new slide background. I'm so sorry. Okay, that explains so much because I was like, I don't fucking know how this pertains to Puritan crimes or why it's repeated over and over and Puritan. over again. I just assumed it was something with Kenyon and was like, I'm just going to delete 10 of these Probably and leave the rest. fine. She only has one eye. She couldn't tell yeah. if it had been repeated <laughs> okay. or not. We're gonna we're gonna move on to this one. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh my Puritans God. are bonkers, mm-hmm. like bonkers. B a n a n a s. Uh huh. And there are a ton of religious parsing and interpreting and quibbling that all seems super irrelevant today. So I'm gonna try to make this boring shit real short for y'all. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm already bored. <laughs> yeah, right. That's Go back to that lovely family in a field for the rest of the night. <laughs> Puritan Crimes is brought to you by <laughs> Canned Wine, Coppola K Winery. Jewelers. <laughs> Every kiss corner, begins with K. Four ninety four and Radio Drive. <laughs> Open Monday through Friday till eight. Saturday and Sunday till, till five. five. <laughs> now you have a friend in the diamond business. Let's All get right. our local window Moving on. Open. Moving on, moving on, moving on. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so the Puritans were English Reformed Protestants in the 16th and 17th... <laughs> Just kidding. In the 16th and 17th centuries who sought to purify the Church of England from its Catholic practices. Boo, hiss, Catholics. Ooh, <laughs> indulgences. <laughs> So they opposed many of the traditions of the Church of England and their perceived tolerance of certain details. Hmm. Style on fleek. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Where do mm -hmm. I get me one of them hats? (laughs) Turns out I was missing two slides. That's fine. You can fit a whole (laughs) wine bottle in that hat. Yes. It's like a wine That's why they're shaped that way. I love it. I assume. Top of the soft to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they were super against the use of the Book of Common Prayer, which was basically the Anglican worship instruction manual with prayers and psalms and whatnot. Um, They were against the practice of confirmation, like I was too during the process of confirmation. When she was Catholic. I did not want to go to Bible study. (laughs) It was the worst. (laughs) I was raised Catholic, though, and I was confirmed, and it was horrible. I, I was say. hard into my Wicca phase at that point. So. Lutheran was I was confirmed. living my best life. Well, we're going to heaven should it exist. You're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be fine. We'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> they were opposed to using the sign of the cross during baptism. Um, they were against kneeling during communion and some other shit that from today's perspective is like you really didn't have anything else more important to revolt against mm-hmm. and like I get that it was important because religion and like your life was super boring and but I suppose it's like, sort of like how I feel about Snapchat now mm-hmm. as opposed to three years ago I was super into it and now I'm like you seriously don't have anything better to do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so like revolt wow. over like sanitation. Right. Don't revolt over kneeling or the sign of the cross. <laughs> but you know, whatever. They're all related to each other somehow. Yeah. Please scroll down for me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I got you. We're very technologically adept here at Wine and Crime. <laughs> Just advanced. crinkled cans. <laughs> <laughs> this is all held together by a string and a prayer, people. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so kind of all we need to know is that they ended up being a super uptight political force aligned with the growing commercial world, and they were just, they were just drama queens. Let's be honest, they're just drama queens. Um, so some, some weird Puritan beliefs. Yes, yes. This is what I'm here for, for sure. Yeah, this is what we're all here for. Okay, so they were not against divorce. Hmm. Take that, Catholics. Nailed it. <laughs> Pick your battles. Don't lean for communion, but divorce is fine. Yeah, yeah, it's I fine. I mean, kneel. 
lean. <laughs> lean. You can lean. I don't kneel or lean, so it's all the same to me. Hashtag I just lean lay in. there. <laughs> That's not communion. You got it over here. In the, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not stand akimbo during communion. <laughs> okay. Because they rejected the Anglican and Catholic view of marriage as a sacrament, they considered it a popish invention with no basis in the Gospels. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, They considered marriage a civil matter performed by a magistrate rather than like a priest or whatever. Whatever. Um, They did find a guilty party in a divorce, and that party was subject to fines, whippings, or time in the stocks. And the guilty party was not allowed to marry again. Ooh. So they did have harsh punishments for the one they found guilty. So there was like a trial, and there was one who was like, the bad one in the divorce, mm-hmm. which I'm all about. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's Always no the husband. Divorce. The husband did it. <laughs> You're the bad one. It like was though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Puritans granted divorces for infidelity, abandonment, and insufficiency. Yes. <gasps> Impotence. This is speaking to Amanda. Impotence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some dudes are just insufficient. Mm -hmm. Lots of dudes are insufficient for multitudes of ways. Mm -hmm. He wasn't man enough for me. Sometimes it has nothing to do with your penis. (laughs) You just suck as a person. (laughs) I don't know why I dated you. What is wrong with me? Mm -hmm. While Amanda airs out her personal laundry. I get a lot out at these shows, you guys. (laughs) This is church for me. Just a therapy session for her in front of 180 people. It's fine. I can't type fast enough for talk space, so I got to get it all out right now. <laughs> uh, and actually, a law was passed at some point calling for the death penalty for adulterers. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which still exists in some countries. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, I, can't, I couldn't fully substantiate this, but I did come across some, like, clue that this came about because... Um, Somebody got an STI and interpreted it as an act of God and was like, we mustn't fornicate with others. Like, whatever. Anyway, so STIs for the win. Am I right? Praise be my syphilis. (laughs) It's a gift from God. It's a sign. And like, again, (laughs) drama queens. Just go get a cream. You're fine. (laughs) Get a salve. (laughs) Go to sleep. Jesus or ointment. Um. Not loving each other was not a good enough reason to get a divorce. The Puritans <laughs> thought that the couple had to stick together as an economic unit. <laughs> we need them to survive. Like, this was legit. These were, yeah. like, contracts to right. make sure that people didn't die of dysentery. Right, 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 right. Okay, so this photo shows a woman named Elizabeth. In 1693... Elizabeth Luxford was granted the first divorce in colonial America. Bravo, girl. Get it, Liz. She looks happy to be here. Oh, just wait. Her eyebrows are on point. She has Kenyon's dead eyes. And Kenyon's (laughs) eyebrows. She looks like Kenyon. She kind of does look like Kenyon. And her eyebrows are on point. They are. They're beautiful. Well sculpted. Threaded, clearly. (laughs) Okay. Uh, she had had one child with her husband, James Luxford, and was pregnant with her second when she discovered that he was already married to somebody <gasps> else. Oh, James. Classic. It's presumed that he had left that wife back in England when he came over to the New World and then Different married Elizabeth. Area codes. Oh, right. my God. Area codes. <laughs> no. Codes. <laughs> My husband's in Africa right now. Yeah. So it doesn't count if you're on different continents. I'm kidding, Zach. Okay. The magistrate not only granted the divorce, but seized James's property and granted it to Elizabeth. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then... Oh, I love this picture. Sucks to be James. (laughs) Just wait. This is like the least of his worries. Look at (laughs) how much he's frowning. It's unbelievable. Look at that. 
She's a Puritan. <laughs> she belongs in the stocks. <laughs> That's alarming. All right. Then the magistrate ordered James to not come within sight of Elizabeth. So, like... A restraining, a restraining order. order. Mm-hmm. An order of protection. Ye old restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to spend one hour in the stocks. Just an hour? I know, right? Oh, just wait. To pay the court 100 pounds, and, then he, like was, lot. and then he was banished from Massachusetts. Uh, bay. <laughs> just wait. Oh, just but wait. wait there's but wait, there's more. more. Billy, Billy Mays. Mays pops out from behind the stocks. <laughs> <laughs> You're not dumb. Later, James was found guilty of some other shit and had both of his ears cut off. Ooh. And then, was, and then was banished a second time. <laughs> he got banished twice. They were like, come back. We have to cut your ears off. You're banished again. <laughs> I think he Shoot. was banished from like another area, but it wasn't super specific and whatever. The ears being cut off was more important than the banish. He was James also banished sucked. from Rhode Island, but like who wants to go there anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Delaware. Is that even a place? <laughs> East Coast jokes. <laughs> That's jokes. <laughs> Wisconsin, am I right? <laughs> we don't talk about Wisconsin <laughs> or St. Paul. Okay. That dark, shadowy place over there. <laughs> you must never go Bye. there. <laughs> okay. Elizabeth changed her name back to her maiden name, Albone. God bless. <laughs> she remarried and she lived the rest of her days in comfort. Boy, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> All right. The Puritans also banned Christmas. Woo! (laughs) (laughs) This is my favorite slide. (laughs) Now this is Puritan crimes like Like the the Grinch Grinch. from like 1981. (laughs) I've got some good slides coming up, so don't commit to this just yet. Can't wait. So the Puritans said that this arose, that Christmas arose from an unnatural ideological marriage between the Roman Catholic Church and the pagans, but like they weren't wrong. That's super true. Yeah. Yeah. In 1659, they officially outlawed Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) Grinch! Why are you so happy that they outlawed Christmas? You, (laughs) like, of all of us, love Christmas the most. I know, I really do. I like a Christmas tree, and your whole house smells like pine. Okay. (laughs) Calm down. Let's just give Lucy a minute. (laughs) Give me a minute. Okay. Anyone who celebrated Christmas was fined five shillings and ten if they were caught listening to Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. (laughs) Worth it. Worth it. On their ye old iPod. (laughs) Where it like had the actual wheel that turned. Yeah. Yeah. You have to crank it. Common Christmas crimes included drinking Perry and being merry, wassailing, mumming, <gasps> gambling, and feasting. But I love to wassail. I can't believe anyone went a wassailing. <laughs> Where's my wassailing bowl? <laughs> and just so you guys know, mumming is acting out folk plays and drag. So <laughs> like, it. bummer. Sorry, Scott. Sorry, Scott. Serious bummer. And Perry is a liquor made from pears. Mm-hmm. Delicious, it sounds And so I good. will point out that they weren't against drinking alcohol because they didn't have a whole lot of clean drinking water on hand. They were just against enjoying being drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only like this because I have to hydrate, not because I like it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, Dr. Phil. Okay. Again, missed a slide. That's cool. That's fine. All right. <laughs> you might recall the Christmas Carol line, Oh, bring us a figgy pudding. We won't go until we get some. Mm-hmm. Yep. That was a real threat. <laughs> <laughs> that often resulted in fights, rock throwing, and hard feelings. Ooh. Seriously? Tell me yeah. more. <laughs> Ooh. Um, speaking of gross Christmas foods of bygone eras... I like figgy pudding. Calm down. Some of us still like it. Fig Newtons are best. No no one. I googled figgy pudding. It's nasty. You're nasty. (laughs) Governor William Bradford, who I don't think was a Puritan, but he was just as big of a bummer. So we're just going to lump them together. Hated Christmas celebrations and called for the holiday treat mincemeat. He called the holiday treat mincemeat pie idolatry in a crust. <laughs> Love meat pie. I'm so hungry. Can we like... I'm so idolatrous. 
Can we like Uber <laughs> eat some meat pie here between shows? <laughs> I will eat it with my hands. Somebody get on that. Please. Biggie Great. pudding. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my God, are these are so of, messed they're up. They're just out of order. No, I know. Those were the carolers. This wasn't saved before we started. It's so totally good. fine. We're experts. Fine. So jewelry wasn't their <laughs> thing either, since it was just too impractical. Mm. Also, mm. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Not a Puritan. <laughs> Sometimes jewelry can hold medication. Yeah, there's Xanax in there. It's a locket full of Xanax. Well, there was, but then I took it. There's Xanax in there. <laughs> <laughs> Through my bloodstream. Uh huh. So when a couple became engaged, the prospective groom would offer his bride to be. Any guesses? Not a cow, but that's a good guess. Not an animal. Uh. A bed. Not a pie. Not a bed. It's I don't not a know the pie. answer. Small. A child. A child. <laughs> My God. His sperm. Oh, the right. answer is a thimble. You were so close, you guys. You were so close. <laughs> this close. A thimble. You were right there. <laughs> Which could be put to good use when it came to sewing textiles and mending clothes in their new home. Like, thanks, Like a husband. dutiful wife should. Amanda, didn't you have an ex-boyfriend who bought you a vacuum for your no, birthday? No, his mom. Oh, yeah. No. Depending on I've the got vacuum, two though, vacuums. Depending <laughs> on the vacuum. <laughs> my Dyson is my most prized possession. And to be fair, it was for Christmas, and I sent him to stand in line outside in Minnesota in the frigid cold for a Black what? Friday deal on a specific vacuum. When the Dyson X was released at like three in the morning, he loved it. <laughs> we are no longer together <laughs> and neither of us have that vacuum it's gone <laughs> but the memories I thought you kept the vacuum uh, the second vacuum I got from a different ex okay can we move on this I really still fun. have <laughs> that's a great vacuum okay <laughs> The thimble could later be filed down leaving a ring ugh a this super scratchy not cute ring that just served as a reminder to serve much fucking time you spent sewing for your fucking husband. He should have gone to Jared. Yeah. It can only be Jared. <laughs> Amazing. All right. We've I'm already hilarious. talked about K Jewelers and Shane Coe I clearly want to get us a Jared. new ad. <laughs> I'm trying really hard. Rothy's. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Puritan everyday life blew so hard that their children actually preferred to be abducted by the Native Americans. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> like, actually. <laughs> there is evidence that when Puritan children were rescued from their Native captors and returned to their communities, they were like, soups pissed about it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> In 1707, Eunice Williams, abducted at the age of seven, was uh, by the Kanawake Mohawks. Um, she, it. she wore Native American clothing and spoke their language. And when her father later rescued her, he wrote, quote, she is obst obstinately resolved to live and die here and will not so much as give me one pleasant look. Fuck off, Dad. <laughs> I'm Native American now. She's like a moody 13-year-old. Like, you rescued me from my new family. How dare you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, same with Native American children who were captured by the Puritans. When they were, re were returned to their homes, they were thrilled <laughs> not to be living with the Puritans anymore. <laughs> oh, thank God. Like, I'm allowed to kneel again. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't like kneeling. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They go back to they the get Native to American go back. home. No, when they went back to the Puritan... Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, I got you, that You're up. fucking this up. I'm right. You're wrong. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the last part, and this is the best part. <laughs> I was writing my notes earlier today in Ashley's attic, and I was just <laughs> cracking up by myself. Okay. <laughs> Everyone take a swig, because it'll be much... Much funnier if you're if you're a little toasty. <laughs> mm. Mm. Woo. 
All my right. sister has sent her husband to the bar for my family already like 10 times. I don't, <laughs> I don't think he's seen any I of the show. I keep seeing him he's, come back He's getting a workout. Where is he? He's not in the room presently. Is he he's currently not in the room right now? <laughs> yeah. He, he's, let him sit in your lap. Oh David, sit God. on the floor. He's on the floor. I want you on the floor cross-legged right in front of me where I can see you. <laughs> come here. Come on. Come David, on, little buddy. David. Come here, little buddy. <laughs> Come on. Yep, yep. Yay. Right there. Yep, right there he is. <laughs> there he is. Love you. We'll be taking a photo of you sitting. But when they do have a bar order, you're expected to. Yep, yep, yep. Top two. Okay, so is everyone ready? Yeah. This is my favorite thing I've ever gotten to say out loud. Oh, God. <laughs> Even Other than, than your vows? Pulp? Yes. Oh, oh, you go to vows, I go to tooth pulp. <laughs> One of okay. us knows her better. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Before I build this up too much, Puritans gave their children some fucking weird names because naming naming conventions were thought to be more of a spiritual prediction than choosing like a nice sounding name like you know, Lily. Mm-hmm. So they were named after virtues and like apparently like random sentiments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I found some fucking incredible examples of this, and I'm starting with the least radical <laughs> in awesome. okay. ascending order. <clears throat> Obedience. <laughs> right? It gets so much better. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. <laughs> Joy it. in sorrow. Ooh. Joy in sorrow. That's my new drag name. Joy in sorrow hyphenated. Just Joy gonna, in sorrow. Just going to stand in, in front sorrow. of an audience and cry for 40 <laughs> minutes to like a really exciting Tina Turner song. <laughs> <clears throat> Joy and welcome to the stage. Joy in sorrow. <laughs> Abuse not. <laughs> Wow. There's more. No. This is my favorite. <laughs> Dust. <laughs> <laughs> this is my baby. Dust. Dust. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to present to the world my newborn That's child. That's even better there than are Damien Faye. There are more. Dust. Humiliation. <laughs> yeah. This is my humiliation. But instead of like a behind closed doors nickname, it's like their legal actual name. On their birth certificate, <laughs> driver's license. Not humility. Humiliation. Humiliation. <laughs> the I'm noun. Changing my name. <laughs> We're going to the social security office tomorrow. <laughs> humiliation. Dawn Jacobson. Dawn Jacobson. Yeah, Jacobson. <laughs> I want to be dust so bad. <laughs> humiliation dust Jacobson. And I'm what's sorry, your new name gonna be no we're not done oh. you don't need to choose just yet because you've chosen for her well Got there you. are more oh good okay <laughs> buckle up we buckle have up? the next now get it <laughs> buckle up <laughs> large buckle on your shoe and hat up. okay the next name is the next one name is joe breaked out of the ashes <laughs> joe for short I think out of the ashes for short. Mm, we'll get to these shortenings. Oh, oh my no. god! And then there were these three siblings in the Barebone family. Oh good no. lord! Their name, like their, their last, last name, name is Barebone. Oh, things are rough when your last name is Barebone. These were their first names. Oh no! <laughs> Praise God! Praise God, Barebone! <laughs> Fear God. Fear God, bare bone. <laughs> and here is the end all be all. <laughs> end all be all, bare bone. No, first I'm name. <clears throat> Get ready. I'm not. If Christ had not died for thee, thou hadst been damned. Bare bone. <laughs> bare bone. <laughs> Iffy for short. <laughs> Iffy for short. Iffy for short. Iffy bare bone. <laughs> Nothing like a devout Puritan to be named Iffy. <laughs> so will you say that name one more time? Yeah. If Christ had not died for thee, thou hadst been damned. Bare bones. Bare bones. Bare bones. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> the third. Oh, my 
my god. And that's all you need to know about Puritan. Yes. 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 So everyone's a little stressed out, a little mm-hmm. anxious. Mm-hmm. We all, we're all there sometimes. Mm-hmm. And uh, looking for a little more health and happiness in our lives. And Headspace is your guide to health and happiness. In fact, just 10 days of Headspace has proven to reduce stress and increase happiness. Who couldn't use that? Just a few minutes a day. Some life-changing skills are learned, Mm -hmm. some meditation. It's not as difficult as you probably think it is. It's not, and it doesn't take that much time. And I I feel like Headspace has come into my life at such a great time because it's been really interesting going back to school and especially going back to school for a therapeutic license. We've been learning so much about mindfulness and meditation and how incorporating this practice just a little bit into your life can be so helpful. And there's a lot of science to back that up. Meditation, it is rooted in tradition, but it's also, again, backed by scientific research. Three weeks of Headspace reduced aggression and reactivity to negative feedback by 57%. I need that. Yeah for users. Four weeks of Headspace improved focus by 14%. This is where I feel like I benefit from this the most. Even just getting into the practice of using Headspace for a couple of minutes, even before going into a class or taking an exam, it has helped me clear my head and focus on what I'm getting ready to learn in such a huge way. I'm incredibly grateful for this service. And this is such a cool product. So Headspace has hundreds of meditation sessions on everything from stress to sleep. So when you get this app, you kind of give it an idea of what your lifestyle is like, how much time you want to dedicate to this practice and where you want to see some improvements. So I was saying that I really want to start getting in the habit of starting my day this way so I can have kind of a clean slate, get some focus, um, maybe relax a little bit and get some stressful thoughts out of my mind before I start my day. But if you're having issues with sleep, you can also get into to a routine of doing this before you go to bed and it really, really helps just getting you into a more restful, relaxed sleep. And things come up throughout your day that are really stressful. So Headspace also has something called SOS exercises for what they refer to as meltdown moments. Mm -hmm. I mean, hi, who couldn't use this? (laughs) And just little (laughs) mini meditations for busy days. You don't have to sit for an hour in complete silence, cross-legged, uncomfortable. You can do this in just a couple minutes of just a little mindful from mindfulness, a little meditation to reset your day at your convenience. It's amazing. Yes, we love it. So you can start your journey towards a healthier, happier life today by subscribing to Headspace. So sign up now at headspace.com forward slash gals to get a free month trial. That's a month of being healthier and happier. I love that. Mm -hmm. So again, sign up online at headspace.com forward slash gals. That's G-A-L-S for a free month trial and start meditating today. Treat your entire life. Native creates simple, effective products that people use in the bathroom every day. They create products with trusted ingredients and trusted performance. And if you're not convinced, you can check out the 7,000 five-star reviews from their customers. This place is legit. Their products are formulated without aluminum, without parabens, without talc, which I have like recently discovered is not good. I used to powder Mm -hmm. up my downstairs. I can't be doing that anymore. Not with anything (laughs) with talc in it. These products are filled with ingredients that are found in nature, like coconut oil, which is an antimicrobial. I did not know that. Shea butter, which is a moisturizer and an emollient, which again, I knew about the moisturizer part. I didn't know any of the other science behind this. Tapioca starch, which is a great, great alternative to talc that absorbs wetness. It's amazing. All of these products are made in the USA with ingredients thoughtfully sourced from around the world. There is no animal testing and they have free shipping and returns. You can't beat it. You can't. Also, it works. Mm -hmm. Don't hold back, people. Just don't hold back. Give it a try. Native can hang with your workout, your busy mom life, your busy dad life, Mm a 16-hour day, Mm -hmm. crime con, whatever it may be. (laughs) Y'all, I'm a sweaty Betty, and I was so skeptical to use a deodorant that didn't have all of the chemicals that, like, lock down your armpits. This stuff truly works. I am completely sold. Uh, yeah, me too. Also, it smells amazing. Mm-hmm. I have the uh, eucalyptus and mint 
scent. Oh. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I have the wow. cucumber mint one. It's so good. And we're not the only people who like it because, like Amanda said, they have over 7,000 five-star reviews. They've been on the Today Show, Women's Health, Good Morning America, Nylon. Ooh. They're, they're all over the place. Love and it. Those ingredients are all, you know, familiar to you. They mm-hmm. don't have a trillion X's and Z's and, like, whatever in the names. And Nada believes that less is more. They have fewer, simpler ingredients, so you know everything that's in your deodorant. That, Love that. lack of talc. Hi. Mm-hmm. It's important. Um, it's also worth it. Aluminum may be linked to some serious health ramifications. We've all heard about that, the mm-hmm. breast cancer thing, um, Alzheimer's. Yeah. And... Although Native is priced at a slight premium when compared to conventional deodorants, it is safe and effective. And again, it it. smells incredible. It's worth it. I feel good about it. I feel Mm -hmm. good about my pits when I'm wearing it. They've got something for everybody. Native comes in a wide variety of enticing scents for men and women and, you know, everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, Plus, they have limited edition seasonal scents throughout the year. It's exclusive. Loves me a limited edition. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, and also an unscented formula and baking soda free formulas for those with sensitivities. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So their coconut vanilla is the most popular. They've got lavender and rose, that cucumber mint. Amanda, I'm looking at you. I am seriously holding and looking at my native deodorant right now. I like don't need to put more on, but I just <laughs> kind of want to. I'm just smelling it. I know that's so weird. My nose is in my armpit right yeah, now. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> So again, those free returns and exchanges in the USA. And if you subscribe, because they have a subscription offer, you save 17%. So that's $2 per stick. And then Native conveniently delivers your deodorant to your door every one, two, three, or four months, whatever you need. I love that. Fully customizable. That's amazing. And yeah, check out that subscription. You're going to save that 17%. And we also are offering a little promo. No. So for 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code GALS during checkout. Again, that's native, N-A-T-I-V-E, deodorant.com and use promo code GALS, G-A-L-S, during checkout to get 20% off your first purchase. You should try it. Treat your underarms. Do it safely. You're not going to look back. Treat your pits. All right. My segment is like very reliant on photos to be funny. So we're we're just going to like. Here we go. go. Here we go. Hang out. Something happened. We got a flutter of promise and then it was ripped away just like everything else in my life. Do, 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 do. Uh, everyone, this is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. But his middle name is If Christ Hat Not <laughs> Died for Thy. Last yeah. name Barebone. <laughs> Jeff's a father of three living in the Puritan community of Plymouth, <laughs> Massachusetts. That's Yay! funny. That and we're done. Woo! We both have pieces of Oh, okay. Praise be, Jeff. Praise be, Jeff. Humiliation, barebone. May the Lord open the slideshow, Jeff. <laughs> barebone. All right. It's sweaty between my thighs, barebone. <laughs> <laughs> Slick down there. Okay. Hi, Grandma. Love you. All right. This is my case. By 1640. Can everyone hear me? My, okay. By 1641, the population of Plymouth had grown to about 2,000 people, which was sizable for the time. Yeah. We have a Plymouth in Minnesota that's like home of the last Applebee's. Yeah. <laughs> Staples. And so that's all I pictured as yeah. I was doing my research. I was like, there's a mall there. Mm-hmm. Plymouth. <laughs> it's a great Talbot's in that Plymouth. <laughs> the colony was stable and prosperous. Slide. That's what stable and prosperous looks like. Well, they're landing. I had to shove it somewhere. Does that one have a peg leg? No, but I'd like to point out that you can see the edges of that keynote stock photo. On the- <laughs> <laughs> you can. Why didn't you delete the photo instead of just layering? Don't look the- at me. I was doing it really quickly this afternoon. I appreciate it's fine. that. I yeah. appreciate that. This we is amazing. had pop tarts to eat. Okay, we were on a fucking timeline. Yeah, I the can't craft wait. services provided by my sister this week have been <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Everybody clap for Ashley. Amazing. Ugh. <laughs> oh. 
She got us three types of apples at Scott's behest. And, and we then, haven't eaten and any And then Scott just pieced out Not and stayed one. with his friend. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. All right. Just kidding. We love you. Okay. So, the new governor, William Bradford. There he is. That guy. Check out that stash. <laughs> Um, mm. lamented what he saw as a moral decline amongst the populace. Big whoop. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> Shut it, <laughs> daddy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he sensed that the people were sliding into sin. Yeah, we are. And he can... Praise s- be. <laughs> right in there. <laughs> sliding in. <gasps> With Lola Lube. <laughs> um... And he consulted with ministers to determine which sodomy crimes were worthy of the death penalty. (laughs) Yep. Which? Which? Sodomy crimes? Yep. Apparently there's Can you be more specific in front of Amanda's grandma? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, we'll get to it. Yes. Um, and also how far an interrogator should go while attempting to extract a confession. Yes. Yeah. I mean, necessary. I have some questions in my case about this, too. Still a problem in the United States today. Uh Um, To quote Bradford himself, quote, and yet all this could not suppress the breaking out of sundry notorious sins. As this year, besides other, gives us too many sad precedents and instances, especially drunkenness Mm. and uncleanliness. Uh, Two for two. Guilty. (laughs) Guilty as charged. Uh Not only intercourse between persons unmarried. Three for three. We're on a roll, folks. <laughs> For which b- many, uh, both men and women, have been punished sharply enough, but some married persons also. I don't know That's how That's where you... they lose me. Yeah, yeah, you're not there yet. Nope. Um, but that which is worse, even sodomy and buggery. Buggery is the best. What's buggery? <laughs> don't worry, we'll get there. <laughs> we will get there. She'll get there. We will get there. Things, Can't wait. Things. Fearful to name have <gasps> broke forth in this land oftener than once. Oftener? Oftener. Mm, way oftener. Like oh, fabric, yeah. fabric softener. Oftener. <laughs> I knew where you were going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We've been spending a lot of time together. Can we, say, can we say thank you to Laura for just hand delivering another bottle of wine for us? <laughs> God bless. God bless. It. <laughs> All right. Now, we introduce our hero. Oh, no. Thomas Granger. Thomas was a 16 or 17-year-old servant to Elder Love Brewster, a successful farmer in the town of Duxbury. (laughs) South of Peniston. (laughs) (laughs) About 6,000 miles from the end. 6,000 kilometers (laughs) west of Peniston. (laughs) Um, okay. <laughs> Just a quick Emirates flight from Licky End. Emirates. <laughs> okay, <laughs> side note, uh, Elder Brewster uh, had traveled on the Mayflower to Plymouth Colony, and he had two sisters, and I had a whole name bit, but it's not going to be as funny, because now Lucy did the name bit. But one of the sisters was named <laughs> Patience. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do have a story yep. about patience. Oh, no. In my notes, I have Q Lucy telling the story. <laughs> so. Oh, God. <laughs> Growing up, as you may know from Scott's intro, Kenyon and I have been together, like, <laughs> intimately since third grade. Yep. And... During that time, I don't know if it was a goal of yours to, like, come off as a Puritan, but, like, you did. (laughs) Yep, yep. She claimed, and I believed it for, like, way too long. To, like, college. That her full name was Kenyon Elizabeth Patience Lang, and she would sign her school papers, the, the full fucking thing, with Patience in there. Why, though? Because my mom It was ironic. No. Because she's super not patient. Because my mom 
said it as a joke. Like, your middle name's Patience. Haha, <laughs> you're such a fucking brat. Get out of my hair. I'm a single mother and I want to kill you. <laughs> and Let I... me poop in peace. <laughs> <laughs> and I believed her for many years. So That's did I. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. All right. And then the other sister's name was Fear. Perfect. <laughs> Patience and fear. Uh, fear. I wonder which one was the funny one. Yeah. It was fear. Oh my God. You don't have a name that just creates that much adversity without getting a sense of humor. Her Kenyan first name was fear. Fear. Kenyan Elizabeth <laughs> Fear Lang. That is a way more accurate name. I, okay, she my name is fucking terrifying. New new name goals: Dust Fear Fitzgerald. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You're taking all the good names. <laughs> all right. Back to Thomas. What can I say about Thomas? So um, much. We have very few descriptions of this young lad uh, other than the fact that he was mild-mannered. Um, his job mostly um, was made up of, like, menial farm chores. He was, like, basically an indentured servant, and so his life was awful. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was also... A teenage boy living in Puritan society. What is a boy to do? (laughs) Scrambled eggs all over my face. (laughs) Not scrambled eggs. I know. Um, So, so, (laughs) society... definitely tossed salads. (laughs) (laughs) A Fraser joke. (laughs) Oh, my God, that's so good. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Love so, it. So this was a society in which really tame shit was considered illicit and sinful. Slide. Uh-oh. And slide. And slide. <laughs> That's where he lived. <laughs> Can't get into too much trouble. Yeah. If you right. pull out, though, there's an Ikea, like, right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not so bad. There's, like, a Shake Shack. It's, so fine. it's fine. It's a strip club. Um, <laughs> okay. So this is an amazing passage that I'm just going to quote verbatim from someone named John Marr from Gizmodo. So God bless. Gizmodo. <laughs> hey. <laughs> They do good work. (laughs) We were really strapped for time. Okay. We're exhausted. (laughs) Quote, young Thomas, like any normal teenage boy, seethed with lust. (laughs) Relatable. Been there. Hormones coursed through his veins. (laughs) <laughs> Body ballads and unmentionable fantasies filled his mind. Oh no. It took only a glimpse of a trim feminine ankle. <laughs> <laughs> That gets me wet. Tell you what. (laughs) Show me those kinks, girl. (laughs) Or the sight of a carelessly revealed forearm. (laughs) Careless whisper. (laughs) To trigger intense unnameable. (laughs) (laughs) Bare bone. Bare bone. Bare bone. Intense, unnameable emotions and perverse desires in this Randy lad. My Randy God. Lad. <laughs> <laughs> Tragically, his surroundings provided few outlets for his raging passion. No. I mean, what? How Your much hand do you is need? Fine. Your hand is fine. <laughs> it wasn't enough for Thomas. No. <laughs> One, oh, Thomas. <laughs> oh, Thomas. One can sympathize with Thomas and his fellow pimple-faced pubescents. Don't even go there with me right now. <laughs> I was going to make a reference you to Amanda's triggered Amanda. pimple. You guys, the second this tour started, it was like a live show and many on-camera appearances. Here's a giant cyst on your chin. 30, flirty, thriving. It's fine. <laughs> 31. We got her some yes 31. two patches. I it's totally checked fine. in at the airport and they were like, you're going to need another seat. 
<laughs> that shit's never gonna fit in the overhead compartment. It's fucking huge. But we've named her him. him. His name is Charles. Every time we get a giant pimple, Charles. we name it Charles. Charles yeah. in charge of <laughs> ruining my entire fucking yeah. life. Okay, so Thomas was fighting the battle between his primitive urges and the social mores against this bleak sexual landscape. It is bleak. It yeah. was a battle that had virtually Bleak. no <laughs> chance of winning. His only hope was to avoid detection by both God and man. <laughs> Thomas tried to be careful, oh, no. stealthily confining his sins to quiet barnyards <laughs> and remote fields. Barnyards? Do you know where we're going with this, folks? <laughs> Ooh, barnyards. Those scrambled eggs, Hey, baby, baby. I hear the moose are calling. <laughs> Toss salads and scrambled eggs. <laughs> oh, my. <Quite> my. <laughs> <laughs> there were no rumors, no gossip, no one to raise a voice against him as he surrendered oh. and gave free reign to rain. his passion. Rain. rain, get it? Free reign? No. Yeah. Oh, no. For weeks. Months, perhaps a year, he went about his furtive practices <laughs> undetected. I hate it. <laughs> but then... I'm really afraid for the next slide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was also in an attic room cackling for two hours That's yesterday, true. so it's this is true. not looking good, people. <laughs> But then, whilst Thomas was engaged in, quote, lewd practice towards a mayor. Oh. Slide. That's the girl horse. No. no, that's the girl horse. Ooh. No. You are on a list. Did you just Google horse asshole? Horse butt. Prominent horse asshole. Images. Uh... <laughs> This, Video. That's a vagine. <laughs> that's a vagine. Ooh, did you mean Kansas? <laughs> is that right? uh, just so you're aware, this is labeled horse butt photo one. Oh God. And two. Ooh. <laughs> that's both. That's clearly both. <laughs> All right. So it's right well, above Amanda's head, and I love I hate it. it. It's so blurry on this screen. You, it's a real crisp get, on the computer. You though. get, get the it. Picture. All right, so <laughs> while he was engaged in this loot practice, a fellow colonist was crossing the remote field and chanced upon him, <laughs> catching him literally with his breeches down. On a bucket. Did he need a bucket? Yeah. yeah. Did he need yeah. a stepping stool? Uh, great question. Bale of hay. Don't have the answer. Bale of hay. Um, <laughs> milking stool. Oh, don't say milking. <laughs> milking for stool. For the rest of the night. That is a trigger word. It's on my list. Milking's out. You're done. What? What? <laughs> All right, quote, once the stunned witness recovered his wits, <laughs> he, oh my God, I love it so much. he immediately reported Thomas to the authorities, fucking Goodman snitch over here. Just trying to have a good time. <laughs> Thomas was interrogated and eventually confessed to having sex with the mayor not just one time. It was his girlfriend. But actually on the reg. <laughs> I mean, she cute. If it was consenting, yeah. it can't be. It's an animal, yeah. so no. Horses are very intelligent. They can yeah. like count and neigh, they yes can or no. Communicate. <laughs> yeah. It well, stomped its feet once for no, twice for yes. Let's <laughs> assume. Here's an apple. Um, this is my favorite part. No. He also implicated several other farm animals slide. Oh my god. In fucking the same mare or no, the other way around? There's a, there's a variety. Gotcha. He's, not, He's an equal opportunity animal fucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Keep your options open, yeah. folks. Monogamy wasn't his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas said he'd been introduced to his method oh, uh, by a the fellow milk stool method. <laughs> <laughs> by a fellow farmhand, and once he'd engaged in the unnatural act, he just couldn't stop himself. Once thy poppeth, thy <laughs> just <laughs> cannot stop it. <laughs> we have eaten so many Pringles this week. <laughs> Our like travel snack is Pringles. It's like the only time we eat them. And so I love that you. Make I honestly think notes. we're gonna be charged extra for like an industrial vacuum for on the our rental car. car. Rental There's a car. Lot of Pringle dust. Pringle in there. dust. Lots. Dust. Fear. <laughs> um. Bare bone. <laughs> Pringle Dust Jesus Christ Bare Bone. I so want to be named Dust. It's not even funny. <laughs> All right. The chronicler of Thomas's interrogation wrote simply, I forbear particulars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I just point out the dead eyes on all, all of the these animals? farm animals? <laughs> just, He's back. He's back. They've seen a lot. Oh, God, no. Look at the pig. The pig. (laughs) The pig's like, meh, I'm fine with it. Nah. (laughs) Roll up another blunt. Thomas is here. Oh, no. (laughs) All right. Well, Governor Governor Bradford wasn't so squeamish. Oh, wait. He would not forbear particulars. He was going to get into some particulars. His diary, which was later published under the title of Of Plymouth Plantation, is considered the most complete and authoritative primary source from the period. Here's what Bradford wrote about Thomas Granger. Yes. He was this year detected of buggery and indicted for the same with a mayor. Oh, Thank you, Alamy stock photo. A cow. Oh! Oh. Kenyon Patience Lang. (laughs) Are you fucking kidding me with that tongue? (laughs) That is disgusting. I had a lot of cow photos to choose from, and this one made the cut. It's so pixelated, it makes it so gross. Like, it's just. (laughs) That is an abomination. I have to say, I I put together this slideshow for her, on her behalf, and I was like, Cal Photo 6, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of photos. <laughs> Two yeah, right. goats. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Five sheep. <laughs> they all have tongues. They Why? all have tongues. I'm into Bye, it. Ram, you. I'm into it. Were they reciprocating? Two calves, babies. This is where I draw the line. This line is drawn hard, right? Look at those beautiful faces. Oh. And and a turkey. <laughs> where even is the hole on a turkey? Slide. Like the part you, oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Thank you for answering my question because... I really There's didn't the know. hole on a turkey. <laughs> oh wow. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I mean I've seen my mom get a whole fist in there, so like get ready. She makes Thanksgiving dinner, you disgusting people. What were you thinking I meant? Oh, Gotta right. get that sack of guts, those giblets. So according to Bradford, this all was horrible to mention, but the truth of history requires it. Does it? <laughs> does it does, it? because we wouldn't be right here, right now, having this conversation without yeah, thank God. these scrolls. Oh, I'm gonna These right. Puritan era scrolls that we're reading from. <laughs> so bestiality is obviously still a serious crime. Hashtag consent, y'all. Yeah. Um, but by modern standards, the punishment in 1642 for this crime was extreme and also fucked up. As are all things in Puritan times. <laughs> yeah. 
So I mean, the crime and the matches the punishment, the right? The names, yeah. <laughs> the authorities took up a full investigation to determine which animals Granger had had his way with. Oh, no. Did they send in an OBGYN? <laughs> <laughs> They're each examined. I don't Check know if the turkeys hymens. have a hymen. Yeah, exactly. There's no way to know. But this proved to be no easy task. Because the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you to the five people who entertained that. You're all great. The mare and the cows weren't a problem to identify, but when it came to the smaller barnyard animals, quote, despite the intimacy he had shared with them, <laughs> Thomas was not able to positively ID his victims. Oh. All turkeys do look the same, though. Yeah. It's not even racist. It's just true. It is true. It's true. <laughs> the authorities tried parading numerous sheep before the lad, <laughs> but it was useless. Useless. You Get it? Okay, you? Yeah, yeah. Useless. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Say it one more time, though. Just, you yeah, okay, okay. Useless. <laughs> Puns. Even to a connoisseur like Thomas, oh. all sheep looked alike. Slide. Uh. Oh. <laughs> God, you're a monster. They're so cute. <laughs> you're a monster. <laughs> no. Apparently, they didn't even try to track down the goats or the turkeys. Lesser Slide. animals. <laughs> oh. And they're all showing us their behind quarters. Yeah, I am afraid to ask what you Googled to Turkey find butt. this photo. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't Turkey hard. but group photo. <laughs> <laughs> Once many of his erstwhile companions had been identified, they killed the livestock in front of Thomas. Yep. Yeah. Burying them in a large pit, quote, so no use being made of any part of them. Why since, didn't they eat them? Since their bodies had been defiled. Oh, Thank you, Suzanne. Man. My mom knows all about not eating a defiled <laughs> barnyard animal. <laughs> Su Suzanne she just goes, knows. defiled, they're defiled. Don't eat them, defiled. they're defiled. Been there. <laughs> Go to Boston Market. This one's defiled. Uh, I need to speak to your manager, Wegmans. This <laughs> one's defiled. <laughs> yeah, don't try and tell me it's not defiled. I fucking know. And when we lump your worth into your virginity, mm. this is what you get. It's yeah. true. <laughs> Even for animals. All right, so I feel like the animals already had a pretty rough go of it, but this was apparently all based off of the biblical passage from Leviticus. I don't know how you're supposed to say this. 2015? Is that how you say that? Mm, yeah, you Wiccan. That's how I you say it. <laughs> and if a man shall lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. All right. Leviticus. Coming through for us. Right. Here for it. There you have it. Then on September 8th, 1642, quote, despite his tender years, Thomas himself was executed by way of hanging. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Just Who is that? How long have you been sitting on Hello. that? Hello. You've been waiting for that moment, and I <laughs> love it. Just, just for if we do release this episode. We when will. we do release this episode. An audience member brilliantly screamed, talk, screamed about he was already hung, and it totally it played, and it was awesome. He could have been that hung, though, if he could get it all the way into a turkey. It's true. Depends I'm just saying. on the turkey. And could have been a butterball. You never know. <laughs> butterball. <laughs> a GMO, like, stretched butterball. All right, Thomas. Listen, Thomas. I've said way worse, you guys. Calm down. <laughs> Your grandma's about yeah, to walk I am keeping out. this, like, chill because my grandma's here. <laughs> you wait for the 9 o'clock I'm not. Okay. <laughs> 
So Thomas was the first known juvenile to be sentenced to death and executed in what is now the United States. Um, obviously, this is not... Like, some people are like, Woo! should I Yay. clap? <laughs> some people are like, I'm just trying to be nice. I don't know. Um, I voted today. <laughs> I'm really know. emotional right now. Um... Okay, so obviously, like, that's not accounting for pre-colonization, so we don't know. Um, In contrast, punishment for individuals accused of human rape at this time involved a mere whipping, not execution. You're fucking kidding me. You can fuck with our women, but you can't fuck with our food. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Even though if you do, we're not going to eat it anyway. We're just going to waste the whole thing. That's what I'm saying, because if you do, then we can't eat it. Yeah. That's right. why well, it's important. Livestock have women always been important. treated better than women in this country. It's yeah. fine. So vote, vote. <laughs> Y'all voted. It's fine. Not to be confused with goat. <laughs> I can see where <laughs> you do different things behind the curtain. Yeah. So Jesus. bestiality was clearly considered a worse transgression than rape. Peter Drummy, a historian at the Massachusetts Historical Society, also noted that this would have been a substantial economic sacrifice, slaughtering the farm animals but not eating them for this agricultural society. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Lucy's from Iowa, so she gets it. I mean, I get it, yeah. Okay. Also, Steve King. Iowa gets it. Oh, my God. Okay. One more quote. The Puritan colonists may have walked away from that gory spectacle smug with the assurance that they had nipped an epidemic of youthful wickedness in the bud. In the turkey bud. (laughs) In In the the bud. In one of these four turkey buds. (laughs) But nothing could be further from the truth. Not only would Benjamin Gord hate it, Another Massachusetts lad of 17 shared Thomas's fate for a similar crime no. 32 years later. No. He also diddled a horse slide. Oh. <laughs> Not just had case. to get that in there. <laughs> you know what's depressing? Hmm. <laughs> When you go to the mall and you go to your favorite stores Mm -hmm. and everything is just like really expensive and it's Mm -hmm. super cute, but you're just like, do I really need that right now? Mm -hmm. But you know what's great? What? When you go to Poshmark.com and you find the same things that other people have purchased at a premium and they're selling to you to get that full life out of these clothes. You know what else is amazing about Poshmark? Tell us. They have a free app for your phone. So you can do it from your computer through their website, or you can be like me and get that free app and then be shopping (laughs) from your pocket constantly. I am constantly perusing this website, and they have something for everyone. They even have things for kids, which is awesome. They have clothes. They have accessories. And like Lucy said, these are brands that I cannot go to the mall and pay for out of pocket. They Mm -hmm. have Chanel. Lululemon. They have Lululemon. I saw the other day, what did I see? Some Betsy Johnson. I saw a Betsy Johnson bag on there that I totally want. They are amazing. You will not believe the deals that you're going to find on Poshmark. Seriously. Poshmark is the easiest way to buy fashion items, but guess what? It's also the easiest way to sell fashion items. So if you have both ways. Yeah, if you have some things in your closet closet that you feel like need to be shared with the world you can also sell your items on Poshmark it's incredible and shipping is super easy for both the seller and the buyer it's incredibly fast and if you see something you want you can make the seller an offer you can barter a little bit and try to get that price even lower than the extraordinarily low prices they already offer And you can share your Poshmark closet handle, kind of like a social media platform that tells your Poshmark followers where to find you on the app. So if you find a consistent person who has awesome style and keeps posting all these cool things for sale that you want to keep buying, you can follow them in the Poshmark app and stay up to date on all the cool stuff that's hitting their store. I love it so much. It's unreal. You're shopping from millions of closets across America. Yep. And selling to those people, too. And listeners of Wine and Crime get five bucks off your first purchase. Love it. We're giving you free money. 
free money people. Enter the invite code GALS5 when you sign up. So again, that is the invite code GALS5, that five bucks off your first purchase yes. at Poshmark.com. And just to be clear, that is G-A-L-S and the number five, GALS5 five for five bucks off. Treat your mm. closet, baby. Do it. Hey, Amanda. Yes? When I was over at your apartment the other day, I mm. noticed you had this sweet new chair. Yeah. Where'd you get it? Oh, my goodness gracious. I got it at Article. <gasps> and now they will be getting all of my paychecks because <laughs> their stuff is incredible. <laughs> this is beautiful, well-made furniture. Scandinavian simplicity. Hello. Beautifully designed and modern. They have so many cool colors. You know how I love to color block in my apartment. Mm -hmm. Like Kenyon said, my apartment looks like the inside of Jeannie's bottle from I Dream of Jeannie. It really does. Lots of jewel tones. Yes. And you can get so many cool pieces like that from article. It's an online only furniture company. So by eliminating the layers of traditional retail, article is able to keep prices low and quality high. And I cannot tell you enough how stunning and comfortable and beautifully made this chair is. I can't even deal with it. There are no showrooms. There are no salespeople that are trying to like upsell you or get paid on commission or pressure you into a purchase. You just get to so shop at your leisure and save money on these beautiful quality items. They are also incredibly serious about their shipping. They do this so well. So no matter how many items you purchase, every order is shipped at a flat rate of $49. It's incredible. That's because, awesome for furniture. Seriously, it's not even just the shipping that is included in that $49. The experience I had when these folks delivered the furniture to me, I can't even tell you. The customer service is so great. They bring everything to your home. I live in an apartment. They carried it down the stairs for me. They brought it inside and they offered to set up the piece for you. If you need help getting your new furniture set up, Article has options for in-room delivery and for assembly assistance. They were so kind and so generous with their time. And the I I've never seriously had like a more delightful delivery Dang. experience than with Article. Unrivaled um, customer service. And they're also super quick. Their in-stock items can be expected in two weeks or less. Obviously, if things need to be put on like pre-order or on hold, that's going to slow down the process. But I ordered my chair and I had it within two weeks and they delivered it during one of Minnesota's crazy snowstorms where there was like a snow emergency. Oh, yeah. And they still delivered it on time and offered to set it up for me in my apartment. It was unbelievable. Unreal. If you, It was unreal. If you do get something and you're just like, mm, I'm not really sure about it, you have 30 days to live with it, experience it, and then you can return it within that 30 days. And again, this is a customer first company. I mean, this is some of the best customer service I've ever experienced. It's the best in the biz. I can't recommend it highly enough. I'm so excited for you. I'm also so it. excited to go back to your apartment and just sit in that chair. It's so Fully cute. appreciating where it came from. I know. I love <laughs> it. I love it. And Article is offering our listeners $50 off. Hi. Hello. Their first purchase of $100 or more. So to claim that, go to article.com forward slash gals. That's G-A-L-S. And the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. So there's no other weird codes to remember. Again, so again customer service. They're like doing it for you. They're thinking everything through. They, they really are. are. So again, that's article.com. That's A R T. I C L E dot com forward slash G A L S to get that fifty dollars off your first purchase of one hundred dollars or more. You will not regret. Treat yo home. Zola, the wedding company that will do anything for love, is reinventing the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. From engagement to wedding and decorating your first home, Zola is there combining compassionate customer service with modern tools and technology, all in the service of love. Aw, it's Aww. so nice. It is nice. I want to throw myself a bridal shower for just me, <laughs> just so I can register on Zola because they seriously have everything. Tell us all about it. Find a partner for Albus and then it'll be legit. I could throw a bunny wedding. And you know you want to use Zola because Zola is the easiest way to plan your wedding and to register. Over 500,000 couples have used Zola, so they got to be doing something right. And one yep. of those couples was Kenyon and her husband, Zach. <laughs> 
Love um, it. Their, their whole suite of invitations was absolutely beautiful. And you can manage everything, your registry, save the dates, all these planning tools online in one place. It saves so much time. So you start with a free wedding website. It's free. It's so easy to use. It just takes a few minutes to set up. They have over 100 beautiful wedding website designs to choose from that fits any couple's style and every type of wedding. So Kenyon's was like, you know, birds of paradise and oh, like so gorgeous palm fronds and whatever for her. South yeah, African and it was so wedding. easy. Like it was this beautiful invite that went into your email and then you can RSVP right within that invite. So it's not like you have to mail something back in. That was mm-hmm. so easy. And then it linked you to her free wedding website, which had her entire registry on it. It could not have been more convenient. There was an FAQ section, which was very handy because Mm -hmm. almost everyone was coming from out of town. So like, can I bring my kids? Do I have a plus one? No, you can't bring them. No, you don't have a plus one. And also like (laughs) where you can stay and where there are some fun things to do on the days that you're going to be not going to the wedding. Like if you're doing a destination wedding, Zola is I mean, really any wedding, but especially a destination wedding is always the way to go. It's so helpful. Incredibly helpful. They had photos of themselves, stories of how they met. So cute. You can customize it in a billion different ways. It is remarkably easy and it's super beautiful when it comes out. And you can then build your dream registry at Zola. This was the coolest part, I think, about Zola, that you make your registry and then guests get free shipping and returns, price matching, more, lots of deals around that. And then um, after your wedding, if there are things that you did not get that you have on your registry, they offer 20% off for you oh, to buy yourself. I love that. And with brands like OXO, Cuisinart, Sonos, Airbnb, you can just go ballistic. It's mm-hmm. incredible. Mm-hmm. It's the best. So... To start your free wedding website and also get $50 off your registry on Zola, go to Zola.com forward slash gals. Again, go ahead, start your free wedding website, get $50 off your registry on Zola by going to Zola.com forward slash gals. That's Z-O-L-A dot com forward slash G-A-L-S and treat yo love. Treat yo nuptials. What's up? (laughs) <laughs> um, I'm also going to talk about sexy times of the Puritan era. Can I please move on to whatever your first slide sure. is? Sure. I can't. <laughs> oh, <Yes>! no. <laughs> Perfect placeholder. Just let's just get a cleanse. It's just this lovely family, this lovely like racially marsh. ambiguous family that Apple has provided for keynote. <laughs> Everybody, take a deep breath. We're gonna oh, do a no. mindfulness practice. Uh, okay, just kidding. Summer of 1637 in Woo! Plymouth, Massachusetts. So wild. It was a summer of 37. 1637. <laughs> they were sucking on chili dogs outside the Tasty Freeze. Uh, John Alexander and Thomas Roberts were engaged in the first homosexual scandal in the Pilgrim Colony. Do you realize you got that in there? Yes, it okay. is. This is a piece of art and like the other really horrifying things that go along with this because homosexuality was frowned upon in the Puritan times and that sort of carried over into this artistic piece that yeah. somebody felt like making and it's in a museum somewhere in it's your ironic. weird state. It's ironic. We do yeah, not we don't approve like it. of this. It's the worst. We're going to go back next. to the horse asshole. <laughs> we'll just go to the next slide. Okay. It's just, it's so, th- we can hang oh. out with this guy for a while. We don't get to him for a minute, but this guy. Here we go. Um, homosexuality, like I said, in the Pilgrim Puritan colonies was frowned upon. The initial laws governing sexual misconduct in Plymouth Colony were part of the 1636 codification of laws. Prior to this date, three cases of sexual misconduct were presented and ruled in the court. Two for fornication were marriage, fornication before marriage, and one for attempting uncleans. What? What? I don't know. I don't want to know. Like but I've definitely done it. <laughs> <laughs> other criminal offenses include <laughs> fornication and other unclean carriages to be punished at the discretion of the magistrates according to the nature thereof, and fornication before contract of marriage. Mm. 
two for two. Been there. Been there. Um, so there was essentially... College. Uh, yeah. Last week. 11 uh, years of your relationship and he, nine years of mine. Don't tell my dad. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> um, there was a essentially a prohibition on same-sex encounters. There were some circumstances that were allowed or ignored, and the penalties were weakened over the course of the 1600s. It's not gay if it's in a three-way. Yeah. It's okay <laughs> if it's in a three-way, or you're a Republican. <laughs> um, homosexuality was banned because it was non-reproductive sex. So if you can't make a baby and you're fucking up our livestock, you're done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We need to survive. Mm-hmm. Having anal sex with your wife was also a crime, unless it was his birthday or a Christmas gift. (laughs) Uh, Previously agreed upon and prepared for, and you had a lot of ye old lubricant. Lola. Um, In most cases, settlements technically called for the death penalty for homosexual acts, but like, it didn't always go all the way there. It was rare. It doesn't always go. It doesn't always get all the way in there. Um, it was rare that this happened, the death penalty. Colonizers often did not want to lose able-bodied man mm. because conditions were so harsh and the community structure was extremely delicate. So it was essentially a don't ask, don't tell situation. But if you're caught in a field with like balls deep in a horse, there's really nothing you can do about yeah. that. You have to go to jail. <laughs> it did take them like a long time to find that to guy. Find years. Out. Fucking a horse in a field like on the rag. Yeah. Um, so if we're going to talk sexy time in the Puritan era, we need to mention Marymount, which Ooh, is a place. Mary not Mount? Mount Mary. Not Mount Mary. <laughs> Marymount, which is now known as something else in Massachusetts, but it's a place um, where strict puritanical rules were rejected. So it was like puritanical spring break all the time. Ooh. Cancun, Cancun, baby. Cancun, yeah. 1637, am Nailed I right? Woo. There was a fung wah bus that took you the whole way. Yes. And if you didn't yeah. die on it, it was the best week of your life. If the door didn't fly yeah, off, I quick was, anecdote. I took so many Fungwa buses when I was still living in Bo- in Somerville, Fungwa. two blocks away. <laughs> Woo! My roommate Laura is here tonight. What up? Sup, Laura. Um, and then Zach was living in New Jersey, and I took a Fungwa bus like every weekend. And one time, uh, mid through a the door fell off the bus and, and what did they do we just kept right on we driving got places to be <laughs> yeah did the bus roll nope We're let's do this let's schedule. do it yeah it's airflow now it's fine yeah it actually was better we it was probably an improvement it. yeah so uh i want to talk about this town just for a minute even though it's like completely unrelated to my case but it's actually amazing and vice.com had some brilliant shit about it so here we go um, in 1625, Thomas Morton, matron Thomas Morton, if you're good to mama, mama's good to you, um, and some deviant pilgrims found an unusually, an unusually queer society. Ooh. One, I know, right? Woo! The story of where I want to live for the rest of my life. Um, one that was not straight up accepting of all the queerness per se, but had a more complicated relationship with it than you might think. In fact, as historians note, the name Marymount can also refer to a Latin phrase meaning erect phallus. (laughs) (laughs) Quite a coincidence given the men erected an 80 foot pole in the center of the town. Uh, it was also used as a maypole. Here's a quote about this pole. <clears throat> a goodly pine tree of 80 foot long was reared up with a pair of buck's horns nailed on somewhat near unto the top of it where it stood as a fair sea mark for directions how to find the way to mine host Mary Mount. <laughs> <laughs> Just a big ass pine tree? You're really good no, at this old timey voice. It's like a maypole. There's every... Every, like, artist's rendering of this town heavily features the phallus. <laughs> I googled Marymount images, and there's the phallus. Um, Marymount residents are described as having rejected the strict rules of the Puritans, declaring all servants and slaves to be free, what's up? Woo! And encouraging, quote, intermingling with indigen- indigenous Algonquin people. Nice. Right? I mean, we still, as white people, ruined everything. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. But at least we intermingled. Yeah. I just hit my face on this mic. <laughs> very um, short strides were made at yeah. very infrequent intervals. Listen, we tried. We tried. Um, where am I? Okay, Morton, the man who founded this town, declared himself Lord of Misrule, and I shall be his lady. Lord of Misrule. Yeah. Oh, there's another picture of the phallus turned into a maypole for a celebration. Nice. Fun. Look how happy all those sweet little queer folks of Marymount are. <laughs> Dancing around a phallus. They better not have been drinking. I'm getting a timeshare in Marymount. There was also in the Vice.com article a description of a Puritan era Scot living in Marymount <laughs> that read as follows One was a youth in glistening apparel with a scarf of the rainbow pattern crosswise <laughs> on his breast. <laughs> There was the likeness of a bear erect, brute in all but his hind legs, which were adorned with pink silk stockings. Oh my God! Scott's next Halloween costume. Scott wore that for the DC show. Yeah. <laughs> bear erect. Rainbow scar. Oh anyway. my God, it's too good. Yeah, it's, I was like, oh my God, it's Scott. I gotta include this. Um, so John Alexander and Thomas Roberts, two men who worked and lived in the English colony at Plymouth, were caught in a homosexual relationship. The horror. At the time, homosexuality was considered a behavior that was learned due to, quote, a lack of proper examples of traditional relationships. So that's, to me, it's like the Puritans are taking the blame. They're like, well, if we're not going to set the right example, they're going to start coupling up mm, in the knows. wrong way. I'm using air quotes, people at home. I'm using air quotes. They're not they're penguins. Such bummers. I know, they're right? such bummers. Um, their charge was, quote, lewd behavior an un and unclean carriage with one another. And here is the court record when they were taken to the magistrates. John Alexander and Thomas Roberts were both examined and found guilty of lewd behavior and unclean carriage with one another by often spending their seed one upon another. Oh. <laughs> Hot. Not above it. Hot. <laughs> That's Which like was, your favorite thing. It kind of is. Yeah. There are a lot just... of regenerative qualities of semen people, so mm -hmm. if you're not on board with that, mm -hmm. get on board with it. But also a lot of empty calories. So don't eat it. So much better for the skin. I'm, I'm in my 30s. I'm not eating that yeah. shit anymore. There's a lot to be said about coming together. I've said you know it what once. I mean? I've said it. I'll say it a million times. You're going to finish in my belly button like a gentleman. <laughs> Hand me a towel and I'm going home because I have Netflix in my own house and I don't need yours. <laughs> Someone literally tried. Your grandma's leaving. Someone literally tried to get me to spend the night after a one night stand by telling me he had Netflix. Everyone has this Netflix. This was in like 2014. All right, okay. No, 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 no. Meaning if you don't have Netflix yeah. four years ago, yeah. Yeah. what are you doing? HBO yeah. Now or Bust, am I right? Yeah, when you have one of those Hulu accounts where you pay to not see the commercials, yeah. and it has every episode of now Crazy we're Anatomy talking. on it, I only I'm sleep over. over for Showtime. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Showtime. No one has that. Yeah. That is a diamond in the rough. Anyway, they came on each other, which was proved. <laughs> so th th <laughs> this interaction was, quote, proved by both oh witness and their own confession. Oh. Witness? Yeah, well, I have questions about that, too. Was it a whore? Was it a mare? It couldn't have been a mare because they testified. So unless that mayor... It was that fucking it dude stopped. crossing that Same field. That, that boner killer, what's-his-face, that ratted yeah. on Thomas... Yeah. ...is also ratting on these sweet, sweet, virile men mm -hmm. who are just sharing in each other's seed. Like, deal with it. Um, so proven by both witness and their own confession. The said Alexander, found to have been formerly notoriously guilty that way... No, ...been, been that gay way. for a while. Not his first rodeo. Yeah. And seeking to allure others thereunto, he was spreading his gayness everywhere. <laughs> the said John was therefore, John Alexander, therefore censured by the court to be severely whipped, which is super fucked up, and burnt in the shoulder with a hot iron. Uh. Yeah, they branded him. It's a mess. Not good. 
and to be perpetually banished by the government of New Plymouth, and if he be at any time found within the same New Plymouth, to be whipped out again by the appointment of the next justice, etc. And so as oft as he shall be found within this government, which penalty was accordingly inflicted. So they were really not happy with Mm -hmm. John Alexander Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. his gayness Mm -hmm. and him spreading his gayness to other people in the town. Mm -hmm. Because it is definitely contagious. (laughs) Um, Thomas Roberts was censured to be severely whipped as well. And to return to his master, Mr. Atwood, so he was essentially already a servant, um, and to serve out his time with his master, but then when that time ended, he was disabled hereby to enjoy any lands within this government except he manifest better desert. Don't know what that means. (laughs) And it has one S, not two, so it's not dessert. I (laughs) double-checked. I couldn't remember which was the one, and then there's like a limerick about how like two S's is more, and you always want more dessert. So one S is desert. I was like, this is definitely not dessert. Also, somebody has like a really shitty hotel shampoo bottle <laughs> in the shower that we use. Called Manifest Better Desert. <laughs> it's just called Desert L'Oreal. Breeze, and I was like, really? Fucking, I'm washing my hair with Desert Breeze. Oh, Dry it out. Perfect. So yeah. it's exfoliating. I have the same question as everybody else. Who was the witness that came forward after this whole thing? And what punishment do they get for being a fucking puritanical peeping Tom? Because I'm assuming they're not doing this out in the field like Thomas was. Yeah, They're probably, at least in the barn... They're probably doing a little this out in the field. Always. You guys at home. And then they witnessed some of this out in the field and they were like... Everyone at home is missing some really quality jack-off hands. Yeah. I'm really sad about it. Why do we not videotape these recordings? Because we probably weren't anticipating that Puritan crimes included so many jack-off hands. I yep. saw it. I saw it. And also, like, my pimple, you guys. I don't want to be on camera. Um, Alexander, like we said, was seen as the seducer, so he was seen as being more responsible. And this shit went to trial. And at the end of the trial, Alexander was not sentenced to death, as we know. He was banished, beaten, and tortured. Like, which is better? Thank God. Who knows? Um, And like we said, Roberts was also beaten, but he was allowed to stay in the colony. But it was kind of a bummer for him, too, because he's essentially living in indentured servitude, which, Mm -hmm. like, can we not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can we not? Be Can we just not? Um, we take really extreme political positions stances. on this podcast. We are against servitude of any kind. No indentured servitude, Mm-mm. you guys. My mic, my mic has been not fun all night. Well, actually. we're almost done, and yeah. nobody wants to listen to her anyway, right. so it's totally fine. <laughs> just kidding, we can share. I love you. <laughs> Last day of tour. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a Sunny and Share thing now. Um, so, it's possible that he was not put to death. Uh, neither of them were put to death, and one was allowed to stay, because as we discussed before, they needed virile, capable men. Mm to, you know, continue to <laughs> bang the livestock. Why'd you point at me? Oh, right, that was your case. To get bang the livestock. Bang the livestock, am I right? And apparently, I don't know where, because I got really sick of researching, but there is a museum somewhere in your lovely state of Massachusetts that has a whole display about these sweet little, you know, pork and baby boys. <laughs> So if you just Google them, I'm sure you can find it. I'm not going to do this work for you because I've had two glasses of wine and I'm really sweaty and I need to be done. So that is my case. (laughs) All right. You guys were amazing. And... And special thanks this episode number one to The Rockwell. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Jeff Laura, and Tim Jeff, and Laura. Tim, I, other people. Scott. Special thanks Our to little Scott. maple man. Special thanks to literally my entire extended family. <laughs> <laughs> also, as per the request of other people that have traveled from far distant exotic lands of West Hartford, Connecticut to be here. (laughs) The Trotwood Drive crew is in the house and the wife of someone who married into the Trotwood Drive crew let me literally sign her baby belly with a permanent marker. (laughs) 
I do best. know also several people flew here, and I am yeah. not going to name names because I don't remember all your names, but I do know some of you flew, so thank you so much for <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> paying money, extra money to be here tonight. <laughs> and last but not least, lovely baby boy Adam for running merch. Thank you so yes, much. Adam. And my sister for housing us and helping with tickets. Yeah. Uh, and getting a baby. All those apples. All those apples, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, <laughs> Officer Frank. Thank you for coming. Love you. We're going to take a selfie with you. Oh, yeah, Can we bring up the house lights? Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. Most importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support and get a shout out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers. Something happened in the home. Someone possibly was killed there, at least one person, and uh, then they disappeared. Texas is known for being tough on crime and those who commit it. Or at least the ones who get caught. There are monsters among us. 60% of violent crimes in Texas go unsolved, and a majority of victims rarely make the headlines. Gone Cold Podcast, Texas True Crime, gives in-depth accounts of unsolved homicides and missing persons cases throughout the Lone Star State in an attempt to provide a voice for victims and their families. She was a loving person. That's why, after 13 years, it's really bothering me still that nothing's been done, nobody's been found. Please join Gone Cold Podcast on your favorite podcatcher as we examine these forgotten and often underreported crimes. You really have to pray and hope for those people that really know something. The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb-roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild-caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone.